Amen. Amen. Um, I'm going to start with the word of prayer. Father God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for waking me up this morning and starting me on my way. I thank you for just allowing me to be here at this time and place. I just ask you to word my mouth. Give me something to, to say that will be helpful to your people of God. Anoint my lips to play and move me out of the way so that you may get the glory and the victory and everything to go do in this day. I thank you in your son Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Amen. Uh, first, give an honor to God, to my pastor, to my first lady, to all the saints in the congregation of God. I am truly happy to be here, and I am so grateful and thankful for this opportunity. Um, Y'all pray for me because I am quite nervous, but um, I am going to give you what does say the Lord, and I don't plan to be for you guys long. So um, I want to kind of jump around a little bit so y'all just kind of stay with me. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and start with my first scripture. Uh, we're going to come from Isaiah 40 and 31. All right. And it's on the screen as well. You guys want to read that. And the scripture says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Amen. Thank God for the reading of his word. So um, I have a question. And I'm going to need y'all participation there. Is that all right? All right. So I have a question. Uh, how many of you all have bought something that was, like, really, like, low quality and it didn't really, like, last you that long? Show of hands. All right. Now, when you bought that particular item, um, depending on where you bought it from, did you buy it with the expectation that it would have um, be durable and be able to last you? Or did you buy it with the expectation that, it's just, you know, something I got really quick and it's not going to last long. I want y'all to keep that in mind, all right? Okay. So, um, in our modern day, it's very common to find products that are designed with for immediate use but not long-term durability. These items serve short-term needs but often fail when truly tested. In contrast, God has created us with great care, equipping us with all the tools we need to endure, thrive, and overcome life struggles. I want y'all to walk with me today as we explore how God's craftsmanship in comparison to the nature of low quality products. Let's go ahead and dive in and understand how we are built to last. And the title of my lesson is You're Built to Last. Amen. So um, kind of relating it back to what I opened up and I talked about, you know, buying products that maybe didn't last you that long. Um, if any one of us look at the tag on our shirt, it's probably gonna say, made in China, made in Taiwan, made in Indonesia, made in Malaysia, made in wherever, made in the USA. And we all know that everything that we purchase is made uh, for a particular person, or for a particular reason, excuse me. Um, now, oftentimes when we buy clothing, or really anything, uh, sometimes there is a reputation when you get particular items from particular places that it might last you a long time or it might just be for temporary use. Now, for instance, um, a lot of times when you think about buying items from China, specifically online, um, I can say from my own testament, when I'm looking at things online and you know it's from China, sometimes you can kind of be like a little bit skeptical, you know, and kind of wonder if what you're purchasing online or what they show online is actually going to be great quality when it arrives to you. And, you know, they've kind of developed that reputation um, just from, you know, experiences and people being able to actually have reviews of what they're putting out, what they're trying to sell to you. Um, I know, like, a popular clothing vendor in these days is uh, Sheen. And uh, <laughs> so <laughs> Sheen is one of the most popular kind of, like, clothing vendors that we have online these days. And I purchased some stuff from Sheen, and I can say some of the stuff that I purchased has been pretty good quality, and I'll be able to wear it, you know, multiple times, you know, over and over again. Other stuff, eh, not so much. You know, when you put it in the washer, it might come out, it might be all fuzzy, you know. Like, you know, like when that, that the lint gets on it, and it looks kind of fuzzy, it looks a little ashy, you know, or some stuff, if the, the, the seams might rip or something. But, you know, so the, the quality kind of varies. Um, but... And this particular scripture, going back to Isaiah 40 and 31, it promises that those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. 
God's strength isn't a temporary boost, but it's an ongoing source of renewal that sustains us through every trial that we go through. Unlike temporary solutions, God's provision is everlasting, enabling us to soar like eagles, run without weariness, and walk without fainting. All right, so I'm gonna leave you guys another illustration. Think of a rechargeable flashlight compared to a disposable one. You have pros and cons for each. Uh, the rechargeable one uh, provides enduring light while the disposable one offers only a short-term solution. God's strength, however, continuously renews us, allowing us to endure and overcome life's challenges. Amen. Y'all bear with me. Okay, and I'm going to move on to my next scripture. And keep in mind the origin of how low-quality products are made. All right, keep that in mind. Okay, so I'm now going to 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 9. You guys don't have to get this because I'm kind of be jumping around a lot. Um, and it says, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. And I want to go ahead and make my first point um, for this particular message is that you have resilience through faith. Okay? Now, going back to speaking about low quality items. Low quality items are easily damaged and often irreparable after minimal stress. A flimsy chair, for instance, might collapse under the weight of a poorly constructed, excuse me, or a poorly constructed house may not withstand the storms of a wind. These items reveal their fragility when tested. However, Paul's words in 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 9 highlight the resilience of believers. Despite being hard pressed, perplexed, persecuted, and struck down, we are not crushed in despair, abandoned, or destroyed. Our faith in God grants us resilience that cheap products lack. This divine resilience ensures that no matter how intense the pressure is, we remain intact and hopeful in every situation. Take it for instance, um, like if you know about the, uh, what is it, the San Francisco Bridge. It's built specifically to be able to withstand some pressure uh, when it's going through, you know, earthquakes and all sorts of natural disasters that come in that area because it's common to that place. That is a particular um, natural disaster that happens commonly. So the things that are built out in that particular area are built a little bit different than those things that are in Texas. You know, in Texas, we have tornadoes out there. They have earthquakes. So the way houses and things are built out there is a little bit more durable. It has more elasticity. So when an earthquake comes through and it shakes the bridge, the bridge doesn't automatically fall down. It's able to have that elasticity. It's able to shake and it's able to move because it's withstanding the pressure that has been put upon it. And we are the same way. God has created us that through anything, no matter how intense the pressure gets or no matter how trials and tribulations come and try to maybe shake us or move us, we are still able to withstand that pressure and we do not give in, we do not cave in, and we continue to push forward and move through the resilience and faith that God has given us. And you could even imagine like a, a ship, you know, that's being built. Um, a ship that has cheaper materials versus one that's constructed, you know, with very fine components. Um, that ship that's created with those cheap materials, it might bend, it might break, it might even fall apart or disintegrate completely while it's going through those tough waters. However, our faith in God makes us like a well-built ship, resilient, steadfast, in the face of adversity, and never giving up. All right, I want to move on to um, another scripture. Uh, I'm going to go to Ephesians 2 and 10. It says, for we are his workmanship, created in Jesus Christ unto good works, which God hath ordained that we should walk in them. And my next point that I just want to really um, emphasize to you guys is that each and every one of us, we are crafted with purpose. Okay? So going back to talking about products and how they're constructed and how you know, they all come together, uh, mass-produced products often prioritize convenience over quality, resulting in products that lack durability and long-term value. They are made quickly with minimal attention to detail. Ephesians 2 and 10 reminds us that we are God's handwork, crafted with intention and purpose in Jesus Christ. Each of us is a unique creation designed for God's good works, prepared in advance by God. Our lives are not about convenience, but about fulfilling a divine purpose. 
This craftsmanship ensures that we are built to last. Say it with me. We're built to last. Amen. And because we are built to last, we are equipped with long-term mission that God has set before us. Okay, so I'm going to give you guys another illustration. So, you know, um, a lot of times in these particular days, we see um, a lot of what I call pop-up houses. You know, this house is popping up everywhere. If you look around, you may be an empty plot, and then next week you go, it's like 20 houses. Like, how y'all build them houses so fast? Like, is the foundation stable, you know? Is it built to last? That's the question I always have, you know, when I look at these particular structures. Um, so, a custom-built home is designed with care, precision, and a prefabricated home is one assembled quickly, again, with minimal customizations. So it's really not special. You might see a thousand houses that look exactly the same. However, when God creates us, he creates us with an intentional purpose, and he is very detailed in everything that he creates us to do. And that is because each of us have a divine purpose that was established by God even before we were created. So even when we're going through things, uh, we have to remember that we are built not to break, not to falter, not to shake, or we may build, or we may break, but we're not gonna be able to succumb to the weights of the world because God has built us and he has equipped us with everything that we do, we need to endure. And just like the custom home, that home withstands the test of time reflecting the quality and thoughts invested into its construction. Likewise, we are God's custom creations, built with a purpose and equipped to endure. All right, I'm going to go to another scripture, and we're going to go to James 1, 2 through 4, and it says, My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptation, knowing this, that the trying of faith worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. All right. So um, the next point I just want to make is that there is growth through each and every trial and every tribulation that we go through. Um, so in contrast, low quality products show wear and tear quickly, deteriorating with use until they become unusable. They are not designed to withstand the rigors of time and use. James 1 through 4 teaches us that trials and challenges, whether they're wearing us down, can produce perseverance and maturity. The testing of our faith refines us, making us stronger and more complete. Instead of being worn out by struggles, we grow through them, emerging more resilient and more capable. All right, and I kind of want to do a little um, visual illustration for you guys really quickly. Okay, <clears throat> so you see this paper towel right here, right? All right. So if I, I can, you see how I can easily crumble this paper towel up? I can also... I can rip this paper towel. If I put it in water, it's gonna disintegrate. Now, paper towels are not designed to be used over, over, and over again. You're not gonna see anyone, unless maybe there, something's going on, you're not gonna see anyone using a paper towel over and over and over again because you can easily get another one. It's disposable. They're not really unique, but they are useful. They serve a purpose. However, they are not really durable. So if I put this paper towel in water, even if I step on it, it's going to become dirty, you know, and it's not going to be usable. I could easily dispose of this. However, let's take this towel right here. If I do the same thing, if I crumble this towel up, it forms the shape of my hand, however, it's still in its exact same shape. I can't rip it as easily. Even I, I probably could, but it would take some strength. It's going to take some effort, you know. I can stomp on this and it's still gonna create, it. it's still intact. Even if I throw this in the washing machine and it's going through the trial, it's going through the, the cycle, it's turning, it's twisting every which way, it's still not gonna use this form. I can use this towel to wipe my head, I can use this towel to bathe with, I can use this towel to wash dishes and it's still keeping its exact same form. We are built to last just like this towel, we are durable. We have been equipped with everything that God has given us to be able to withstand any sort of pressure and any sort of thing that the devil may try to put against us, any sort of trials, tribulations that we've gone through. We are built to last. Even if I were to put this towel out in, in uh, a storm, it probably, it might 
bend, it might break, it might not even be exactly like this way, but it still would be usable. So we have to remember that we are just like this. We are built to last. We have durability. We have flexibility. Everything that God has given us, he has made us to be able to withstand any sort of situation that we're going through. Amen. And um, I want to go to another scripture really quickly. It's Job 1, 22, 22. It says, and we all know the story of Job, but I just want to get to it a little bit. Um, it says, then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshiped and said, naked I come out my mother's womb and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. And Job is a very, very uh, great example of someone who wasn't built to endure. You know, Job's story is a powerful testament, excuse me, to enduring strength and resilience that God equips us with. Despite losing his wealth, children, health, job, and, excuse me, and health, Job remained steadfast in his faith. He did not sin or accuse God of wrongdoings, but instead praised God's name. Job's endurance in spite of the unimaginable suffering illustrates how God builds us to last through even the most severe trials. His faith was not cheap or fragile, but do, deeply rooted and resilient, enabling him to withstand immense hardships. Yeah. Amen. And I want to go to my last and final point and kind of talk about God's warranty and how he ensures we're built to last. And I want each and every one of us, to, each and every one of you all to know that you are under God's warranty. Yeah. All right. Now, I want to kind of um, talk about quality products now. So every quality product comes with a warranty, and that's a promise from the manufacturer that the item will perform as expected and, be, and will be repaired or replaced when it fails. God's warranty for us is even more comprehensive and trustworthy. Now, if you think about a warranty, uh, a warranty's purpose is to cover um, when something might break or it might falter a little bit. And the good thing that I, the, the point that I kind of want you guys to remember, even if something has to be used or um, fixed or you have to use a warranty for something, it does not mean that it's not durable. It just might mean that it might be, need some tuning, it might need a fixing, it might need something, you know, t just to be tweaked or um, changed so that it can perform as it's destined to be or as it's been built to be. And we are the same way. You know, when we go through our trials, we go through our tribulations, we can use God's warranty to ensure that we can continue to operate and fully manifest and fully do the things that he has called us to do. Some ways that we can use God's warranty is, of course, by going to his word and getting into his word and just relying on his promises that he says. He says he'll never leave us or forsake us, you know. He says he's always with us. You can go on your knees and you can pray. You can fast. You can ask God for strength. You can, you know, go to others and talk to your brothers and sisters, and they can bring you encouragement. So all those things fall under God's warranty. And, again, a warranty is not something to show that the item is not durable or that it is not built to last, but just that it ne might need something to help it to continue to last through everything that it's going through. So I just want to remind you guys that you guys are covered under God's warranty, and his warranty is one that never expires. That's the great thing about it. You know, when you buy a washer, when you, dry, you buy a dryer or even a car, you know, it comes with a warranty that might be like, 50,000 miles or something like that. You get all your oil changes and stuff like that, you know, for that particular amount of time or till it gets to that mileage. However, God's warranty never expires. He is always going to be there. We can always call upon him when we are lacking or when we, are, we don't have strength. We can always count on that warranty. It's lifetime. It's never ending. And we should always find ourselves using that because it never runs out. It never runs dry. And it's always going to be there, even in the midst of our most Hard trials and tribulations, God is always going to be there. Man. And uh, one more scripture I have is Philippians 1 and 6. It says, being confident of this very thing, that he hath, excuse me, he which hath done a good, a begun a good work will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. All right. So God promised 
to complete his good work he began in us. This divine warranty ensures us that no matter the trials we face, God will continue to equip us and sustain us. He is committed to seeing us through every challenge, ensuring that we fulfill our divine purpose. All right, and just in my conclusion, I just want to point out one more scripture, the Psalms 139 and 14 which reminds us that we are not a result of hurried mass production process. We are fearfully and wonderfully made, crafted with precision and care by the hands of our creator, God. Unlike cheap products that fail under pressure, we are built to last, designed to endure and thrive through the challenges of life. Now, as we kind of reflect and go back and remember all these things, let us embrace the truth that we are equipped with divine strength, resilience, and purpose. We are crafted to withstand trials and emerge stronger, much like a diamond crafted under pressure. Our faith in God's foundation ensures that we are built to last. And I just want you guys to hold on to the assurance that we are fearfully and wonderfully made by the master craftsmanship himself. There is no greater craft than God. In every struggle that we face, remember that God has equipped us to endure and thrive, reflecting his glory and purpose in our lives. We are not temporary and we are not fragile. We are built to last. Amen. Y'all pray for me.